okay good, yeah people were happy with the questions and they said that people seemed to be sort of participating and practicing so the questions were more detailed inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Prabhu. What does it mean if you feel a magnetic attraction like electricity pulsating in your body? What do you f what, what, what does it mean to feel a, a magnetic attraction like an energy pulsating in your body? Well, alhamdulillah that is the teaching of, of magnetism. That's the whole teaching of the muraqaba and magnetic character we're talking today on the same subject that the tafakkur and the immense depth of tafakkur the shaykh won't go into it until people start to do it. When the shaykh… when the people do it based on how they're asking questions then they can go deeper into these realities. It's not just basically when you meditate, it's basically trying to reprogram. So we gave an example today, so give me this other remote. We say slave and master but that's maybe a more ruder understanding but this is a tech knowledge, this is not us saying these things. There's a, a slave unit and there's a master unit in technology and in the adab is the shaykh and the student that every student has their own buttons in life, what they want to do, their own will in life and how they want to operate themselves. Tafakkur and contemplation is that I'm, I'm surrendering, I give up Ya Rabbi, I, I, I did life the way I wanted to and most likely I probably ruined everything and I didn't achieve what I need to achieve and there's not that much time left for me to keep playing around like this, I want to achieve your realities. So then this remote has to be emptied. This, this technology has to become everything emptied. I don't want to program any more buttons, I don't want what I think, I don't want you know what I have as an understanding. So once this empties and takes a path of I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm going to sit and just admit to myself my nothingness, what happens then Allah says, then train with this master unit. This master unit is capable of reprogramming this one, right? This remote can program this remote. Have you ever done that at home where you have to change with the infrared signal and there's a light coming from this that programs into this and then transfers all the knowledge of this remote so that now it can change the TV channels. So anybody has a little bit of tech background understands. This remote can completely change this remote and begin to send its energy, send its light, send all of its programming onto that unit and to train it, that's just the sample of its understanding. So when they sit for energy the shaykh is already of a magnetic character that they have an energy, they've trained themselves on how to, to produce that energy as a result of their energy and their energy field is based on the quality of the iron on their blood. So they took a life in which to purify their blood, purify their iron, purify with zikr, purify their breath that comes in. The sanctity and the purity of the blood is now we go backwards, that I want, I want pure blood, say, okay I want pure blood. How are you going to have pure blood? It's going to be rooted in your breath. How you breathe in is going to be the first dress and tajalli of the blood that you're going to be using in your body. So I'm going to smoke and contaminate the blood and then contaminate my iron? No. And I'm going to be near somebody who smokes or any type of inhalant that's going to come in and affect the, the purity of my breath? No. When I understood those things then when I breathe I bring in an energy, I begin to purify this blood, purify this energy and then I'm a person from dhikrullah. And I have my zikrs, my awrads and everything that I'm supposed to recite. So when I sit and meditate and I'm breathing in and I make, Allah, that breath purifies the blood, purifies the iron, cleans the iron and the iron moves the breath and the blood moves into the heart and the heart stamps, stamps that reality, Allah. 
So now that iron on the body is not just uh, any type of uh, satanic energy, negative energy, bad energies that are moving because any energy will be attached to that iron because the metal is, is conductive of that electricity and that qudra and nazma or whatever type of energy they're trying to collect from, from this world. So it's the dhikr, the breathing, all of the purification processes then they begin to charge their energy. So what happens then if you charge your energy, charge your energy, you become mag magnetic and that's what they call magnetism. You have the ability to attract people with energy. The energy that you are putting out your magnetism is very strong. And in school they gave us all the test where you take the battery, you put a coil and you try to magnetize the paper clips. Because anything with a magnetic charge it will attract other metals, it'll attract the metal. So it means the iron in other people are attracted to the energy of the shaykh is producing. The shaykh merely puts out the energy from the heart by Izzatullah, Izzatul Rasul, Izzatul Mu'mineen and the energy field of your iron on your body is being pulled and drawn into their presence. And it doesn't need to be physical, it can be just through watching the videos. As soon as you watch the video the sound and the energy that is being produced is moving into the home and begin to vibrate on the person's blood, on their iron of their blood specific and then resonate within their heart. So yeah the definitely magnetism and the magnetic character of the shaykh is what draws more and more power. As Prophet gives more qudra, more power onto the heart then that magnetism draws more people to it. And that's what we call then the reality of magnetism. And by the reality of that magnetism Allah has drawn you to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't have that magnetism there's no way that you can love that reality. And that was then the talk that we gave on this magnetic character. When Allah loves you He puts your frequency to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that your heart is attracted to that reality, your heart is beginning to to move towards that reality, nothing will satisfy you but to be in the presence of that reality. Means now the magnetic pull towards Prophet is immensely strong. And so what's shaitan's role in magnetism? To reverse your polarity, right? So if you're attracted there's an attraction. So when you studied about magnets how, how you can reverse the polarity of the magnet? By hitting it. So then shaitan comes and makes a fitna on your life and hit your magnet. So means fighting bad character is a hit from shaitan why he's doing that? So that to reverse your polarity to that person and then to be unattracted to them. So that happens in life, that happens with loved ones, that happens to everything. That some, one day you're attracted to something and shaitan hit it, hit it, hit it and then the polarity of that changes and now you're repelled from that person, you don't want anything to do with them. But imagine then if that's with the heavens and that's the immense danger of the heavens that this magnet of the heavens requires good character. As long as we keep our good character we are drawn to the reality of Prophet when shaitan hits us with bad character, he's trying to reverse our polarity so that, oh you know I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think it's important anymore for me to ask Prophet I'm going to ask Allah directly. That's a big danger because then their whole system in the polarity of their reality is moving away from the haqqaiq and that's all the that shaitan wants. And that, that's the whole safeguarding of life. So our life is to build the energy, perfect that energy, build that frequency and that magnetism and that is the draw to the reality of the shaykhs because they're the magnetic reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad And if they lose that draw everybody runs away from them because they're no longer feeling the magnetic charge. That's why their actions have to be 100% correct for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu
Um, what to do when there is so much deception, toxic people? I try to follow the sunnah and help them, but they harm me through envy and mental abuse. What to do with such toxic people when they want to harm me? Yeah, what to do with toxic people when they want to abuse you or harm you and we've discussed this before that faith and the reality of reaching towards faith is that not to fear anyone but Allah If you talk a certain way for too much then that's a different diagnosis that fearing everyone, paranoid about everybody, everybody's trying to take something from me, come into my head, this, this is some a sign of something else. The sign of a believer and there's some people I've heard they're scared of everyone, they don't want to take a call from anyone, they're, they're scared they're going to be attacked by this person's nazar, that person's… but that's not faith. That's not somebody believing and saying they have some sort of knowledge. Faith is to be trained in this knowledge, trained in this reality. And that, Ya Rabbi I need to reach, I need to be dressed by your tajalis, I need to be doing my awrat, reciting my salawats and I fear no one but Allah And through my training and my connection and my salawats Allah will give me the energy sufficient to protect myself. And I feel if I'm going somewhere and the energy is not correct, though there's a deficiency in you doing the practices you have to do. You should have been doing more salawats, watch what you're eating, keep your wudu, keep your salah but fear no one. If you're going to live a life of fear, fear is the opposite of faith that somebody's taking my energy, people are reading my mind. No, nobody can come into anything if your energy is secure, your heart is on an encrypted file. Shaitan can only enter into your head. If he's talking too much and whispering into your head and you're listening to it, again that's a, another diagnosis of something else. That the, the, the connection is, is, is uh, not working and shaitan is able to hijack your, your thought process and, and your ability to protect yourself. But the path is not based on the head and people who are like, did I do this right, did I say this right, did it, it was exactly supposed to be 21, was it, was it 32, was it 45, was it supposed to be before this, before that. You're going at a very headstrong understanding, so we get a lot of emails like this. To have his ajal to read this, I read 21 times, is it 21 times or 20 and then one time? Is it at Wednesday night, then Thursday night but is it really Thursday but Friday night? So when you talk like this and you email like this, immediately the diagnosis goes up, you're coming through your head in this door and you're actually thinking your recitation is lifting you and doing anything for you? No, you merely recite what they ask you to recite and negate yourself that not my recitation and not my action, nothing is going to help me Ya Rabbi but that you're going to lift me with your blessings. So we do what we do as a sign of my faith is I'm doing it, I do my awrah, do my zikr and the rest is in Allah's hands. And I did what the shaykhs asked me, their prayers and their du'as, they bring us into the nazar of Prophet and with an instant Prophet can appear and dress them and change them for all of eternity. But it's not me that I recited Fatiha correctly or I didn't recite it correctly and I recited this one time or 10 times or 21 times or 13 times. To give you the awrah to do, you do it to the best of your ability and understand everything then is based on faith and that I'm not able to do anything. I cannot take away any type of difficulty but I'm doing all of this to enter into your love. If, if I enter into your love Ya Rabbi everything will be taken, every difficulty will be taken. But if you're coming in and writing all these things about you know exact and, and it's the wrong approach is from the head and this is not away from the head, this is away from the heart. That the practices have to be done with intention of Alhamdulillah I did my best but Ya Rabbi I am an abdukul aji so da'ifa wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad. I have no ability to help myself, I have no ability to raise myself. I'm just doing all of this but I'm giving all that account to you. That's why I said read the Rajab du'as and this is why this is a month of khalwa and seclusion. If you're reading these du'as please read them in English if you know English. Because if you read them and read them and read them and you're still emailing like this, it means you really didn't read them. Because this is from the Sultanul Awliya, 
is not from other shaykhs who wrote. The sultan of all shaykhs wrote the, these du'as and he's saying that, Ya Rabbi if you have two doors, one for believer and one for your slaves, ajizun, I'm coming through the door of slaves, I'm not coming with my belief. I, I don't think my belief reached the haqqaiq of, of iman. I know my testimony of faith is it real, I, I witness what Allah wants me to, to witness. No, so they taught themselves that everything they're doing is just wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. They negated it. Let Allah to tell you it was okay, not do you think it was okay and then you become prideful on what you've done. So we took a path in our lives, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And I'm trying my best Ya Rabbi just to, to keep you to be happy, to be satisfied, Ilahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. And that is again why they're so active, they're trying to be active, active, active and they don't see anything that they've done as anything but they're doing, they're doing, they're doing as much as they can inshaAllah. But our way is the way of the heart and not the head inshaAllah. Sayyidi, what is the, what first, is the first, first practice I can do coming from being an atheist to a believer? Thank you, I know nothing. Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the first practice I can do coming from atheism into belief? Alhamdulillah that, that Allah uh, guided your heart and, and brought that uh, light and, and hope into the heart. And uh, you, you can meditate and every day you just say your shahada, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah and Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem so that this light of Allah illuminate the heart and take away all these difficulties and say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Every day inshaAllah hundred times, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and that God's grace and emanation to begin to dress the heart and bless the heart and uh, take away difficulties and uh, illumination inshaAllah. So alhamdulillah, very good, mashaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi. Uh, how do we find the hole in the boat? How do we find the hole in the boat? <laughs> so one, are you are you trying to to bring the the boat down, or <laughs> so that you can you can knock it down a little bit more? Then the reference to the hole in the boat is from the Surat Al-Kahf. That the sustenance of the believer has to be brought down to get their attention, their wealth and will deem them to be sovereign and independent of, of all difficulties. And that's for Allah to determine. So when the actions are, are, are to the best that they can, the love that they best that they can, they do and they put the discipline of their practices then there's no need for the boat to be down. So when they're disciplined to do their practices, they have that love of Sayyidina Muhammad they're doing everything they're supposed to, the actions are correct, then they can bring that boat back up and, and alhamdulillah that's nothing for Allah It can support from ways that, that could never be imagined. But it is a means, an immense barakah because if not for that then we would have to wait to the grave to be punished. And Allah doesn't want these ashiqeens and lovers and the ones whom are coming to the threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad for that difficulty. So the boat going up and down is a safeguard for them so that every time they can make their tafakkur, they make their uh, hisab, they make their accounting, is there anything wrong in what I'm doing? Should I be making my salawats more? Should I be doing this more? Should I be focusing more on my akhirah? And many times Allah will inspire the servant is that you do more of your akhirah and don't worry about your dunya, we send you your dunya. So there could be many reasons that the, that boat is either still leaking or, or is, and its time is for Allah to determine, inshaAllah. Just have sabr and patience, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Um, why do we do the 40 day lentil diet? Why do we do the 40 day lentil diet? Especially in the holy month of Rajab in which immense lights are coming because everybody lives to eat. Everybody lives to eat. Oh uh, wow, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna have my coffee, I'm gonna have my breakfast. 
then oh by lunch time I'm going to have this, 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 by dinner time it better be this, if it's bad oh I'm going to go home I'm going to be so angry. Imagine they burn all your hamburgers all the time. <laughs> but alhamdulillah they made up for because they ordered a lot of pizzas and other hamburgers. <laughs> so your whole life is, is, is order, ordering and, and what you're going to eat and how you're going to live and, and you actually feel less of that understanding and the miracle of Allah So awliya and shaykhs. They've been in seclusion and they've been under these diets and they understood its haqqaiq and its reality. That when you take the, the dunya desire of food away and all the entertainment of how you structure your day around food and the meals that you're going to have and there's nothing but your ibadah and your worshipness and then they give you a food that will sustain you because the lentils are are powerful source of protein and very powerful for opening your heart. They bring a softness into the heart, it's sufficient to keep you sustained. But the main thing is in 10 days of a lentil diet between 10 to 12 to 13 days you feel the anger of the nafs. The nafs is very upset that, are we eating this again? Say, yes, it's your breakfast. By lunchtime what are we doing? Lentils again. By dinner time he's very angry. Then by 15 days and, and 20 days you're, you're thinking of how I'm going to make the lentils like into a cold salad, I'll smash the lentils into like a cookie, I'll try to do something to fool myself that the, <laughs> this lentil is something other than lentil. <laughs> hmm? oh, I'm going to make it like a pate, I'm going to do something. <laughs> Why? Because the body is so fed up with this food, the nafs is completely rebelling and at that point when the nafs realizes that this person is not going to stop with this, then the, the power of the food actually is dropping because you say, I'm just really not hungry right now Ya Rabbi, I'm going to eat my one meal then maybe have my, my second meal and I'm going to put less in and by seclusions they would begin to eat less and less and less and Allah began to show them, see it's not the food that sustains you because as soon as that food was dropping their zikrs were increasing, the amount of zikr was increasing, the power of the zikr was increasing. Every zikr they were doing they saw how Allah was sustaining them just through their zikr and they only needed a minimal amount of food to achieve those energies and they were eating to live. They ate enough just to keep their body in a state of, of living but their sustenance and being sustained was by their zikr. So when the person is trying to imitate that state and say, I'm going to meditate a lot this month and I'm going to take away the importance of food in my life and at least experience how my nafs is going to attack me and I'm going to get angry and I'm going to be impatient. And when that begins to really subside and they begin to feel the energy of their zikr. That when they go in and start to meditate and do their zikrs, their zikrs become very strong. They're not worried about what's going to be for dinner because it's lentil they're not carrying anymore. And they begin to even eat less than they drop 20-30 pounds with a lentil diet. So it has a lot of realities in, in how people are, are, are just living this life of theirs just to eat. Now everybody's guilty of that. But to be someone who just eating to survive is a different reality. And then they understood then their reliance on their zikr and, and the power that Allah is sending to them. People think in the last days, you know, how am I going to survive their difficulties? I have to store away all sorts of kebabs and all sorts of spices and all sorts of things. And its reality is, no actually you, you may just have some, some lentils and and Allah will open miraculous energies that uh, lentil will be enough for you, you'll be making that every day, you won't even care to be eating it and Allah will send the qudra and the energy onto the soul of those whom are dhakirin, the those who, who their life is to make zikr and salawats. And that's what's important so they don't have to worry about storing all the different foods they like and spices they like, it's just not about that inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa. Click the link now to subscribe.